This is a Mustad number 14 2X long. Again, it's one of my go to pat hooks. The S82 hook, the new Mustads are chemically sharpened and they have a needle point. Well, that's pretty special when you're trying to hook fish that are hard to catch. A lot of these fish are just mouthing it, tasting your fly and letting it go. When they're right in the bite and there's a million caddises, they're taking flies crazy. But when, when they're a little bit finicky, they're tasting your fly and then letting it go. You can't uh, have a dull hook and expect to catch very many of these fish. Okay, this is my almost signature caddis pupa pattern. And uh, I will tie it according to how I like to tie it with the materials I like. And uh, number one is the dubbing. And that's the SLF Dave Whitlock. It's a nymph thorax, number one red squirrel nymph thorax. Uh, it doesn't look red to me. It looks like it's a tanny gold colored body. And I'll just tie a little body on there. I don't go too overboard. I tie a fairly small body. And with all fly tying, there's a reason why we cover the hook. That's so your material doesn't roll around the hook when you're actually adding it or adding tension to your thread. So we put a little layer of thread. Now the thread I'm using is a very fine thread, 6 aught or 8 aught, and uh, it's used to cinch down your material. If you use too heavy a thread, you bulk up your fly. We're not trying to bulk up the fly, we're trying to cinch it down. Now, my, my shuck under the wing shuck is going to be, again, the go-to on this pattern is the UV Ice Dub, Shrimp Pink. And I take and I roll it into a string I add it on top of the body, I tie it in the middle, I fold it over and tie it down, and I take and I pinch off the back end. It does two things. It, it gives me the end of the fly and it also stretches the fiber, so it looks like a shuck on top of that. Okay, next step. My CDC, I add it to this fly now. I only add a half a dozen strands. I don't like to bulk it up because this is a, a soft hackle wet fly. So I only want a few strands in the body here so that, and I don't want it sticking out too far and I don't want this tuft in the front end. So we're going to clean this up. Now, next step, I have what we call soft hackle, hen hackle fe feathers. This is a modeled hackle feather, and I cut it into V's. Now, this is the hardest part of the product thing to do. We take and we actually cut the feather off of the stem, and we cut little half inch pieces. And those half inch pieces are what we're going to tie on to the fly. And that's the half inch piece we're going to need for this fly. Now I, when I'm doing these, I prepare a few of them. You try to get as much as you can out of a stem until you get the excess tip and it's no, no good for anybody, so we get rid of it. Now, first step. I like to take the one that's at the butt because it's got a little bit of fuzziness to the head. So what I take is that feather and I place it right on top in the middle. 
I take my other hand and squeeze it and then I do a soft wrap and place it right in the middle so that it actually sits on both sides of the body of the fly. The first one I tie on I is the first seating. The second one is a little bit of a cleaner V cut feather and I place that right on top of the other one and tie it in place. Now the, that's what we're after right there is a nice double wing sitting on top of each other and we don't want them spinning around going out of place or anything they're sitting right on top when they get wet they actually tighten together as a cone and uh, they'll actually trap an air bubble inside there and that's what the CDC does when it hits the water it traps a tiny bit of an air bubble and then it sits there and it flutters in the surface film and it's fished under the surface so it's actually a soft wet fly the next step is I take a Hungarian partridge feather and I'll take the feather and what I'll do is I'll cut the V out and then I'll fold back the fibers and what I want is about three four fibers on each side of this fly hanging underneath now it's hard to see what I'm doing I've folded back the feathers I'm going to place them in place stick them on each side of the head and tie that in place just a few wraps so that the legs are sticking out underneath the hook what you I used to wrap the feather around and it was such a tough one to get all the fibers to sit underneath. This turned into a really good method. If you take and cut the center of that stem out, you can actually use this feather about five or six different type times just by folding back those feathers and using that over and over, that little piece. Now to finish off the fly we need a little bit of a head. Now the caddis flies have little tiny dark eyed heads and I'm going to use a squirrel spiky dub and this one is a dark brown and that's an SLF product and uh, I use a very little bit of it but it does finish off the fly very nicely. I will put on just a sliver onto the thread and I will make the head close to the wings of that dubbing and then I will finish off without over building this fly head up. I like to clean it up nice and neat and there will be my signature caddis pupa I don't know what to call it double wing or caddis pupa or soft tackle or whatever we call but that fly seems to work before the big caddis hatch starts during the caddis hatch and uh, when the caddises are down and there's not much in the water. It seems to work when there's nothing else out there. They seem to remember this fly as the start of the hatch where the caddises come to the surface or they're swimming in the water, getting sucked down a current in a shallow area, in a deep area. It's just a fly that works everywhere. And that's, uh, that's my signature soft hackle caddis pupa pattern.
put a little tiny drop of glue on that hold the threads together give it a shot of and there is the soft tackle caddis pupa and I'm gonna pinch the barb on that one also we don't want to forget that there it is